Now, we will travel south along the coast, and we will land Diablo Canyon. So it's, it's a very serious discussion. This is the last remaining plan of its type in the state of California. It, it, the question is, is this the site that it should operate with all of the questions of seismic instability, questions that seem to arise every few years. Another fault is mm -hmm. discovered. Another fault is discovered. Another question mark about its, uh, its safety uh, and its potential uh, capacity uh, to survive uh, an earthquake um, uh, that's certainly more modest than the outsized quake at Fukushima, but nonetheless an earthquake of a magnitude 7.5 mm -hmm. um, or even below, depending on the quake. We've discovered quakes, its proximity is with, uh, in some cases, less than a thousand feet from critical infrastructure of this plant, uh, within certainly a few miles with other discoveries. Uh, there is a huge population density in and around the area, over half a million people within 50 square miles, and we are in the future business in California. And that means we're in the renewables business. The cost is getting cheaper and cheaper, and our capacity to do great things uh, has been excelled by the great leadership we have in the state that's marked uh, in, um, uh, in um, real, very recent terms uh, some new audacious goals that California will meet because that's who we are. Uh, and so it's given me, this is a big deal, uh, a big deal. Uh, there's a lot of insecurity, a lot of vulnerability um, in terms of where this was cited. And I don't think pg and &E in its quiet moments would disagree that this may not have been the ideal site uh, for a plant. Nonetheless, they... Yeah, all the nuclear plants they got in California, they ain't telling you about it, yeah. It's on shaky ground, yeah. We the people have to let them know. It's on shaky ground, yeah. So much wrong, so much room. Yeah, get involved. Now, we will travel south along the coast. And we will land Diablo Canyon. So um, this is an interesting and unusual circumstance of sorts for um, for this plant because there is a, uh, there's not continuity, there's not consistency with some of the terms of expiration uh, yes. as it relates to the larger federal issues in the NRC uh, in 2024, 2025 respectfully. There's this lease which is not insignificant, turns out uh, perhaps very significant. <laughs> Uh, if it's not extended, uh, 18 and 19. So it gives this, this body an um, uh, enormous amount of influence, perhaps, over the ultimate determination of its fate and future. And as a consequence, it's a very serious discussion. This is the last remaining plan of its type in the state of California. It, it services an extraordinary need in terms of its uh, total output. It has a huge economic impact on the region, more broadly the state and one could argue the nation. Uh, so it's not uh, a, 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 an insignificant question that we're being asked. Um, and it's a question that not only are we being asked, but many other agencies are being asked. And if I were a pundit, I'm not. Um, and there's nothing worse than an elected official that tries to be. So <laughs> let me be that person for a moment with that caveat. Um, I, I just don't see that this plant is going to survive beyond 24. 2025. I don't see that. Now, I absolutely may be wrong, but that's the punditry. Um, and there is a compelling argument as to why it shouldn't. Uh, there is legitimate concern about not just nuclear, we can even push that as a, an aside, because there are good people in the environmental community that feel that nuclear must play an outsized role in terms of achieving our uh, greenhouse gas reductions of 80% by 2050 that's marked in most of our conscience. And, and I'll leave that as an aside, but the question is, is this the site that it should operate with all of the questions of seismic instability, questions that seem to arise every few years. Another fault is mm -hmm. discovered, another fault is discovered, another question mark about its, uh, its safety uh, and its potential uh, capacity uh, to survive uh, an earthquake um, uh, that's certainly more modest than 
the outsized quake at Fukushima, but <laughs> nonetheless an earthquake of a magnitude 7.5 mm -hmm. um, or even below, depending on the quake. We've discovered quakes, its proximity or with, uh, in some cases, less than a thousand feet from critical infrastructure of this plant. Uh, then certainly a few miles with other discoveries. Uh, there's a huge population density in and around the area, over half a million people within 50 square miles, and we are in the future business in California. And that means we're in the renewables business. The cost is getting cheaper and cheaper, and our capacity to do great things uh, has been excelled by the great leadership we have in the state that's marked uh, in, um, uh, in um, real, very recent terms uh, some new audacious goals that California will meet because that's who we are. Uh, and so it's given me pause and consideration in terms of the role of this commission. And that's why I appreciate your recommendation to pause <laughs> for the moment and support that. Uh, and to reflect upon what was just mentioned as it relates to our obligations. Uh, you know, when this was originally, um, this lease was put in place, it's absolutely right. There was no CEQA considerations back then. We didn't know a lot back then compared to what we know today. And it is not without precedent, as it was mentioned on the sequel question, with these, um, these oil leases. Uh, that what appears to be a benign question of extending an existing lease uh, triggers sequel considerations. Why uh, one would consider the same here, um, I don't know. I do think we should consider the same. The question is, what's the scoping on that? What's it look like? Uh, how do we, you know, deal with, what, what's the CEO, as they say, in, in the vernacular, your vernacular, loyally vernacular, what's the CEQA treatment look like? <laughs> um, and that's, that's a question that at least I haven't been able to answer, uh, and I've heard different opinions, candidly, and I think the opportunity over the next uh, few months here, uh, uh, until our next <laughs> meeting, to really reflect on that, I think is important, mm -hmm. and I would certainly encourage us to, to consider that. I'd also encourage us to consider the broader contextual issue because it was it was pointed out and I think appropriately if this is shuttered in 2024 this is not insignificant in terms of the total electrical needs of the state it's a profound question and uh, not just a cost question uh, it's a reliability question and that means we got to get moving now we can't wait can't wait a year can't wait two five certainly can't wait ten years uh, and that means we all need to start working more collaboratively with our other state agencies and not just wait for the PUC to come down and say, here's what we need to do or figure out what's going to go on with the state water board and this, the one uh, through cooling, which that issue alone, I think, and that's the punditry in me, I think that issue alone makes this from an economic perspective uh, very likely to call the question of its fate and future, just that question alone. Uh, but I, I hope we can take a look and contextualize that question. And state lands, and I think our strategic plan bears it out, um, will play a role in answering those questions. And so I think it would be very helpful if staff could, over the next few weeks, try to help contextualize that question for us. You don't have to answer it. Uh, God bless. <laughs> Love that. Uh, but, but help us uh, contextualize that question, um, as I know a lot of organizations are beginning to do with mm -hmm. renewed vigor and emphasis. Um, but uh, this is a big deal, uh, a big deal. Uh, there's a lot of insecurity, a lot of vulnerability um, in terms of where this was cited. And I don't think pg and &E in its quiet moments would disagree that this may not have been the ideal site uh, for a plant. Nonetheless, they've done uh, an enormous amount to try to secure uh, these facilities, literally and figuratively, and uh, I know they don't take this lightly. Uh, the security and safety of this facility. It's not in their business interest to do so, uh, and uh, certainly their family members too. Uh, they've got uh, they've got thousands of employees, and they've got a community they care about as much as we do. Uh, so um, I, I hope we will consider, based on all these factors, the staff recommendation, um, and move towards try to framing this simple <laughs> question. And I think ultimately uh, we should end up um, moving in that direction. I just sort of previewing a bias here that I have based upon um, some real reflection. This is not, uh, you know, I've not just entered in this in the last few hours or days. I've been thinking through this for the last few months and, uh, and I'm hopeful that uh, this, this body will move in the directions the staff has recommended. Now, we will travel south along the coast.
and we will land Diablo Canyon. Um, I imagine we have a number of people that wish yes. to do the presentation. This is item 123, and then we'll move to public comment. Yes. Uh, so right after item 123. I have seven or eight speakers' cards. Anyone else wish to speak on 123, the final item? Please fill out a speaker's card. Um, and Jennifer, I don't know who's making the presentation. Well, I am. <laughs> I will be making the presentation. I'm just trying to find my notes. Take your time. Um, so I do have a PowerPoint on this. Great. Uh, thank you. Okay, this is um, calendar item 123. It is um, the consideration of a um, application to terminate two existing leases for the intake and outfall structures at Diablo Canyon in San Luis Obispo County, um, and the issue, an application to um, for a new lease to cover those same f facilities for a limited term. Um, just to put um, some additional context around uh, these facilities, this uh, these are. Um, uh, facilities located offshore at the Diablo Canyon nuclear power plant in San Luis Obispo County. Um, here's a aerial photo to give you a, a better sense of, of what these structures look like and where they're located on state property. Um, just a little bit of context, uh, in August of 1969, the State Lands Commission authorized the issuance of a 49-year lease to PG&E for the water intake um, structures and breakwaters associated with the Diablo um, plant. This lease expires in, on August 27, 2018. In May 1970, the Commission authorized a second lease, 49-year um, lease, to PG&E for the cooling water discharge channel associated with the plant. This plant expires on, um, on May 31, 2019. So PG&E has submitted an application requesting the termination of the two existing leases and the issuance of a new lease for the continued use of the water intake structures, breakwaters, cooling water discharge channel, and a number of other structures. Specifically, this lease application is seeking a new lease to ensure that the term will coincide with the expiration of PG&E's current Nuclear Regulatory Commission's licenses. PG&E has advised the Commission staff that a formal decision regarding whether to continue to seek um, license renewal with the NRC has not yet been made. The NRC is currently pursuing environmental review under NEPA um, for PG&E's license renewal application submitted in November 2009. Most recently along that, um, that those, the federal process side, then um, the NRC held an environmental scoping public meeting in August 2015. At this point, staff reasonably expects developments over the next year relating to the operation, permits, and licensing of the power plant that could inform any decision the Commission may, meet, may um, make on this particular lease application. So additionally, staff is still evaluating the appropriate environmental review for this lease application pursuant to CEQA. For these reasons, at this time, staff believes it would be prudent for the Commission to defer action on this application at this time. And that concludes my presentation. Right. Uh, so, uh, we've got a number of speakers, lots of opinions, mm -hmm. at least here, uh, but I won't share them yet. Um, I'll ask if we could uh, to uh, see if the speakers could come up and then uh, they'll help us contextualize the conversation and uh, we'll start um, because it's on top of my list. Mark, if you can come back up. Mark Krauss uh, from PG&E. Uh, Jen uh, will come up. John White uh, and Jim Boyd and, uh, and then we'll go to Bill White afterwards. Thank you. So, after, almost good evening, Mr. Chairman yeah, and Commissioners. No, uh, Mark Krauss with PG&E. PG&E does not believe there are CEQA issues associated with these uh, issuance of this lease. We will continue to work with your staff as they consider this application. Just want to point out that Diablo Canyon is a uh, power plant is a safe, clean, reliable, and vital energy resource for PG&E's customers and a significant economic engine for the Central Coast. The plant provides low-cost, carbon-free electricity for more than 3 million people and ensures PG&E delivers some of the cleanest energy in the nation. The intake and discharge structures support plant operations, including the generation of electricity and cooling for components. At present, these leases, uh, these leases, sorry, 
At present, the leases for these structures are to expire in 2018 and 2019, as was just presented. The extension would allow the continued operation of the structures through the 2025 end of license and uh, no change in existing operations. And I think that's what we want to emphasize. And that the generation of safe, reliable, and affordable electricity is that which PG&E's customers count on. So uh, we will look forward to working with your staff. And that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, um, Chair Newsom and members of the commission. Jen Eckerly, Ocean Policy Consultant with NRDC. Um, we submitted a last minute letter on this. Um, I think it came in last night or this morning to you. Um, we'd like to support the staff's recommendation to defer action on the current lease application. Um, we expect over the next year there to be developments around the operation, permitting, and licensing of this plant that could inform the decision of this commission, as your staff recommended. Um, the lease request includes continued use of an existing water intake structure, among other once through cooling infrastructure and operations. As you know, open ocean intakes like the one at Diablo result in significant impacts to marine life through impinge impingement and entrainment. Um, the Diablo Canyon plant right now pulls in about 2.5 billion gallons of water a day and is uh, currently killing about uh, over a billion larvae of marine life. Um, minimizing these impacts statewide was the primary goal for the State Water Board adopting their once through cooling policy um, it back in 2010. Um, deferring action by this commission will allow time for the State Water Board to make a decision on how Diablo will comply with the once through cooling policy and allow your staff to conduct a thorough CEQA analysis of the plant's continued impacts on marine life, particularly um, to the uh, marine life within the highly productive and diverse Point Bouchon Marine Protected Areas, which are less than one mile from the plant. Again, we support deferral of this decision and thank you for your consideration. Thank you Good afternoon again, um, Mr. Chairman, members, commissioners. Um, I'm John White. I'm, I'm here today on behalf of Friends of the Earth. Um, and I just wanted to advise the commission, we, we had hoped to have a piece of work uh, completed by this time, but we are in the process of finalizing a study that uh, we're carrying out of four friends of the earth to take a look at the availability and economic uh, and technological feasibility of replacing the megawatts uh, now provided by Diablo Canyon with renewable and other low carbon, uh, zero carbon resources. Uh, we think this work is going to be compelling. It's going to be based on other work that has already been done. Um, we just wanted you to know this is coming and that it hopefully will be helpful to all of the decision makers uh, and we can begin hopefully to have an orderly process for uh, moving forward uh, with alternatives. Um, we didn't do the kind of planning and thoughtful uh, alternative analysis with respect to the San Onofre plant. Um, we think this is an opportunity uh, to be thoughtful. We have time. Uh, PG&E has a, a, a good system to work with. One of the things that we're discovering in this work that we've identified is the opportunity that this will create uh, overall, um, not just for uh, environmental and renewable development, but also for, we think, potentially uh, enhanced reliability for the system. So we just wanted to let you know that this work was coming, and we'll be happy to share it when it's finished. Thank you. Thanks very much. Uh, Jim Boyd. Mr. Chairman and members, I'd like to yield my time to Mr. White, who is the principal spokesman for the Friends of the Earth. As former Energy Commissioner, State Stays on the Nuclear Regulatory Commission, I'd be glad to answer any questions if they come up. But his letter Fabulous. on behalf and in light of the hour and the number of people. Well, you're being too generous. Now, I, now I'm, I'm questioning your motives. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, good afternoon or good evening, commissioners, Mr. Chair, staff. Um, we'll try to do this in, within three minutes, uh, the both of our comments. Um, the key issue that's been talked about so far has been CEQA and, and the commission CEQA obligations um, that need to occur before the, uh, the lease can be approved. Before we get to the CEQA issue, though, I just want to point out um, that the state lands has an independent obligation to look at the impacts of this plan, separate and apart from CEQA. I think when we saw the um, strategic plan and the mission statement, it said it was a, there was an emphasis on stewardship, and that's certainly one of the major roles of state lands commission, stewardship of public trust lands and resources. Um, as you heard from NRDC, 
um, the plan is currently operating is having absolutely devastating uh, impacts on uh, marine wildlife resources. I mean, 1.5 billion juvenile fish per year being killed by this uh, water intake structure. Um, the, ex the lease extension for six years, that adds up to uh, you know, another 9 billion juvenile fish wiped out. That's an Im important consideration that you need to have more information on before you make a decision. Um, and that would be true even if CEQA didn't exist. But getting back to the CEQA issue, we, didn't, we haven't really heard here tonight a, a legal argument, but you did um, receive some papers from PG&E's attorneys, so I just do want to address that real briefly. Um, the, the gist of their argument is that this is an existing, ongoing operation and there's no increase in, in the intensity of the operation. So therefore, uh, it comes within the existing facilities exception under CEQA. But that, except, that exemption uh, contains an exception for unusual circumstances, and I think in this case, um, to say that there are unusual circumstances is an understatement. Uh, this is the only remaining nuclear power plant operating in California. Uh, the original lease uh, was approved by this commission almost a half century ago, before CEQA was even enacted. Uh, there's been no CEQA review for the project. Um, there's new information that's come up in any event since that time. Uh, four new uh, seismic faults that were not known uh, at the time the lease was originally approved. Um, and as far as this once through cooling impact, th this plant accounts for 80, almost 80% 80 of all of the um, ocean uh, water intake uh, from once through cooling plants in the state, 80%. It is essentially the once through cooling problem that the state has today. Um, so um, if these aren't unusual circumstances, I think nothing is. Uh, the argument PG&E makes that, well, even if there are unusual circumstances, there, there can't be an impact because this is an existing plan. That's just not the law. Um, there can be existing impacts even when a, 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 uh, existing facilities continue to operate. This has also been state lands as policy. For example, with oil, uh, oil facilities that have been operating for a century, you have required CEQA review because, for example, the risk of future impact uh, an oil spill, for example, or here, uh, the, the risk of a seismic event or a tsunami or a flooding event. These are future impacts. They're not part of the existing baseline. And every year that this plant continues to operate, that risk goes up. So that is an impact under CEQA uh, uh, that is significant and, and so therefore cannot rely on this categorical exemption. Um, and finally, um, <coughs> Apart from CEQA, just getting to the substance of what you're going to need to decide, uh, one of the standards is you, know, you can't approve a lease unless it's in the best interest of the state. And I think, as uh, John White mentioned, we will be coming forward with a, a report that shows that this plant can be replaced uh, in an ec economical and environmentally superior uh, manner. Uh, and so that's going to that's going to be a major consideration um, in any decision whether to extend the, the life of this lease. Thank you. Appreciate that. Thank you. Uh, Linda Adams? And after Linda, that's the last speaker card I have. If, again, anyone else wishes to speak. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and members. I'll make this very quick. I'm here today on behalf of the California Coast Keeper Alliance, and we um, also are requesting a deferral of, of this decision until environmental review is, takes place um, in accordance with the uh, uh, prior comments. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, anyone else on this item? We'll close public comment. Um, thank you for your comments and again, patience and the lateness of the day uh, and lateness of the hour. So um, you know, this is an in interesting and unusual circumstance of sorts for um, for this plant because there is a, uh, there's not continuity, there's not consistency with some of the terms of expiration uh, yes. as it relates to the larger federal issues in the NRC. Uh, 2024, 2025, respectfully, there's this lease, which is not insignificant, turns out, uh, perhaps very significant, uh, if it's not extended, uh, 18 and 19. So it gives this, this body an um, uh, enormous amount of influence, perhaps, over the ultimate determination of its fate and future. 
And as a consequence, it's a very serious discussion. This is the last remaining plan of its type in the state of California. It, it services an extraordinary need in terms of its uh, total output. It has a huge economic impact on the region, more broadly the state, and one could argue the nation. Uh, so it's not uh, a, 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 an insignificant question that we're being asked. Um, and it's a question that not only are we being asked, but many other agencies are being asked. And if I were a pundit, I'm not. Um, and there's nothing worse than an elected official that tries to be. So <laughs> let me be that person for a moment with that caveat. Um, I, I just don't see that this plant is going to survive beyond 24, 2025. I don't see that. Now, I absolutely may be wrong, but that's the punditry. Um, and there is a compelling argument as to why it shouldn't. Uh, there's a legitimate concern about not just nuclear, we can even push that as a, an aside, because there are good people in the environmental community that feel that nuclear must play an outsized role in terms of achieving our uh, greenhouse gas reductions, that 80% by 2050 that's marked in most of our conscience. And, and I'll leave that as an aside. But the question is, is this the site that it should operate with all of the questions of seismic instability, questions that seem to arise every few years. Another fault is mm -hmm. discovered. Another fault is discovered. Another question mark about its, uh, its safety uh, and its potential uh, capacity uh, to survive uh, an earthquake um, uh, that's certainly more modest than the outsized quake at Fukushima, but <laughs> nonetheless an earthquake of a magnitude 7.5 mm -hmm. um, or even below, depending on the quake. We've discovered quakes, its proximity or with, uh, in some cases, less than a thousand feet from critical infrastructure of this plant, uh, then certainly a few miles with other discoveries. Uh, there is a huge population density in and around the area, over half a million people within 50 square miles, and we are in the future business in California. And that means we're in the renewables business. The cost is getting cheaper and cheaper, and our capacity to do great things uh, has been excelled by the great leadership we have in the state that's marked uh, in, um, uh, in um, real, very recent terms uh, some new audacious goals that California will meet because that's who we are. Uh, and so it's given me pause and consideration in terms of the role of this commission and that's why I appreciate your recommendation to pause for the moment and support that. Uh, and to reflect upon what was just mentioned as it relates to our obligations. Uh, you know, when this was originally, uh, this lease was put in place, it's absolutely right. There was no CEQA considerations back then. We didn't know a lot back then compared to what we know today. And it is not without precedent, as it was mentioned on the CEQA question, uh, with these, um, these oil leases. Uh, that what appears to be a benign question of extending an existing lease uh, triggers CEQA considerations. Why? Uh, one would consider the same here. Um, I don't know. I do think we should consider the same. The question is, what's the scoping on that? What's it look like? Uh, how do we you know, deal with, what, what's the CEQA, as they say, in, in the vernacular, your vernacular, loyally vernacular, what's the CEQA treatment look like? <laughs> um, and that's, that's a question that at least I haven't been able to answer, uh, and I've heard different opinions, candidly, and I think the opportunity over the next uh, few months here uh, uh, until our next meeting to really reflect on that I think is important mm -hmm. and I would certainly encourage us to to consider that I'd also encourage us to consider the broader contextual issue because it was it was pointed out and I think appropriately if this is shuttered in 2024 this is not insignificant in terms of the total electrical needs of the state it's a profound question and uh, not just a cost question uh, it's a reliability question and that means we got to get moving now we can't wait, can't wait a year, can't wait two, five, certainly can't wait 10 years. Uh, and that means we all need to start working more collaboratively with our other state agencies and not just wait for the PUC to come down and say, here's what we need to do or figure out what's gonna go on with the state water board and this, the one uh, through cooling, which that issue alone, I think, and that's the punditry in me, I think that issue alone makes this from an economic perspective uh, very likely to call the question of its fate and future, just that question alone. Uh, but I, I hope we can take a look and contextualize that question. And state lands, and I think our strategic plan bears it out, um, will play a role in 
answering those questions. And so I think it would be very helpful if staff could, over the next few weeks, try to help contextualize that question for us. You don't have to answer it. Uh, God bless. <laughs> Love that. Uh, but, but help us uh, contextualize that question, um, as I know a lot of organizations are beginning to do with mm -hmm. renewed vigor and emphasis. Yeah. Um, but uh, this is a big deal, uh, a big deal. Uh, there's a lot of insecurity, a lot of vulnerability um, in terms of where this was cited. And I don't think pg and &E in its quiet moments would disagree that this may not have been the ideal site uh, for a plant. Nonetheless, they've done uh, an enormous amount to try to secure uh, these facilities, literally and figuratively, and uh, I know they don't take this lightly. Uh, the security and safety of this facility. It's not in their business interest to do so, uh, and uh, certainly their family members too. Uh, they've got uh, and they've a thousand employees, and they've got a community they care about as much as we do. Uh, so um, I, I hope we will consider, based on all these factors, the staff recommendation, um, and move towards try to framing this simple <laughs> question. And I think ultimately uh, we should end up um, moving in that direction. I just sort of previewing a bias here that I have based upon um, some real reflection. This is not, um, you know, I've not just entered in this in the last few hours or days. I've been thinking through this for the last few months and, uh, and I'm hopeful that the, this, this body will move in the direction as the staff is recommending. Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> um, Mr. Chairman, I, first I want to thank PG&E for bringing this forward ahead of schedule. Uh, it really gives us time to think through uh, a lot of these issues and this is an important decision. Um, what I'd like to do also aside from just looking at the um, CEQA treatment and uh, I know we'll be getting more input around that from some of the uh, interested parties is also um, having the staff come back with um, if we were to consider a lease proposal um, also beginning to um, identify some of the larger public trust issues as well. Um, and that's uh, certainly front and center with respect to other leases that we look at, but um, ought not forget that that is uh, also a central focus. Yeah. Okay. Agree with that. Yeah, I support the staff recommendation. Uh, Jennifer, any any reflection on I mean your thoughts in terms of our comments? Um, just that um, I'm happy to hear the comments. I'm happy to receive the direction, and um, our staff will be committed to bringing back. Um, an analysis um, with potentially some recommendations um, to, on not only an approach and a framework um, analyzing the CEQA considerations, but also a framework for looking at the public trust issues, including the future en energy needs of the state and how this all fits into that picture. Um, and we're happy to do that at the February meeting next, w next year. Terrific. I love it. I love it when we agree. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> disagreement too, but this is preferable. Yeah. Uh, so with that in mind, we close public comment. Uh, there's a motion to support staff recommendation yes. and with all those caveats. Yes, that absolutely. Through, absolutely. absolutely. Thank Great. You. Thank, you. Thank you. Now to those that feel we need, and I tend to agree, uh, public comment on Docktown. We've had a number of big public comment sessions about Docktown. Yes, we, we have. But we haven't really agendized, have we? No, we, um, we have so not. Before you all get up, I'm not trying to take the rug out from on you. I, I heard uh, you loudly and clearly. I, we gotta, we got to take a good look at this. And so I just want you to know you shouldn't have to wait for public comment. We need to agendize uh, your discussion. Um, but that you can help us frame what that agenda would look like with your public comments. I just want you to know I, uh, this is you guys have taken an outsized amount of your own time on multiple occasions since I been chair this last year raising these issues with us and we've got it I think we have a lot we owe you uh, a little bit more focus and a little bit more time and attention all the nuclear plants they got in California they ain't telling you about it yeah it's on shaky ground yeah we the people have to let them know it's on shaky ground yeah so much wrong so much wrong Hoo, hoo, hoo.